And this question comes from Annie, who is a concerned neighbor. Now, Annie lives in a complex. And he says that one of the neighbors in the complex, uh, the owner of a particular unit, let out his property and then just continued to manage uh, the, the lease on that, on that particular property. Um, she says, and she recounts the story, that the tenant here stopped paying rent. And because of the tenant stop, who stopped paying rent, the owner arrived and then broke down the door. And um, the tenant then replaced this door with a door that is less aesthetically pleasing for the estate itself. Now, the reason I raised this is because already there's an eyesore around the fact that there's certain things that are happening on the property itself and to the face of the property that aren't in line necessarily with the complexes, regulations and rules and general aesthetic. Um, she says now that these now are illegal occup occupants of the property because they've stopped paying rent. Uh, and she says that they're quite troublesome. Uh, they cause a lot of trouble and they believe the tenants of the complex believe that they are these occupants are, you know, the cause of a spate of criminal criminality within the, within the complex itself. Uh, she says that all attempts by the body corporate and the neighbors to contact the owner now have proven unsuccessful. They've gone as far as uh, enlisting the services of tracing agents and still no response from the owner whatsoever. Annie now says that um, she's had issues with regards to the fact that they are not sure as a body corporate and as um, uh, and neighbors on what to do here because they cannot proceed with an eviction because they're not the legal owners of this particular property. Uh, she says it is becoming an issue and in, in, the, in, in, in the face of not being able to contact the owner, the body corporate and the neighbors are uncertain about what route to follow from a legal perspective. And I think that's important from a legal perspective. So Salma, what kind of advice can we give Annie as a neighbor, concerned neighbor, and to the body corporate as well who's faced with this particular situation? Chris, the good news is it sounds extremely complex, but um, there's actually a relatively simple answer. Problem with simple answer in law means probably going to court. Um, so it's not the cheapest answer that I have, but there's actually a, 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 a quite a big um, amount of opportunities and, and possibilities of how to address the issue. First of all, we have CSOs, the Community Schemes on Bid Services. You do not have to be the owner. The thing is, the Community Schemes um, service, on Bid Services and the Community Schemes Management Act both creates a situation where there is now, in fact, a relationship between the body corporate and the tenant of the property. In so far as we even need to provide the information of all the occupants in the unit, to CSOs, so CSOs knows exactly who is occupied. Now, how many body corporates comply with that? I can't tell you, I, uh, I don't uh, hang out at CSOs ever, but um, there is a relationship between the body corporate and the tenant, which there wasn't prior to the promulgation of these, uh, these pieces of legislation. So under the sectional title um, act, there wasn't, but under the sectional title schemes management act, there is in fact. So they can go to CSOs, even though they do not have the owner um, and they can't contact the owner. But very importantly, they do have the ability to litigate against the owner. The fact that he's not paying his levies means that they can approach the court. And you don't need to only approach the court there for um, a payment of the arrears. They have options because they're not paying the levies. If utilities are included in that, they do have the right, and that's a very quick, easy, cheapish application to do. Approach the court for utility disconnection order and say, okay, let's mitigate our damages. Court, and guys, please listen to what I'm saying, court, not go there and disconnect electricity, get a court order to do that, and it can be done. It's a relatively quick and easy application to do, not a very expensive thing. We disconnect the utility supply on court order. We interdict them from reconnecting. And while we're anyway in front of the court, we might as well um, get the court to, to uh, give a, uh, an order to the owner to attend to enforce the lease agreement, because that's going to be part of the uh, typical conduct rules in a body corporate, that if you are not occupying your pro uh, the property, but you are renting it out, that you will ensure that the occupants are complying with the conduct rules. So 
it's an interdict that you can get to compel them to do that. However, the fact that these arrears also mean that we can um, obtain a court order. And remember, in terms of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, your unit will serve as uh, the domicile address. So you don't need to really have this guy. You can approach the court and you can say, this is my domicile address, but I need to caution the body corporate here. The court's going to frown on that. The court doesn't like to declare property specially executable if we can't show that we've, um, we've done everything in our power to try and inform the own office. But that's an easy thing to get around. You approach the court for an alternative uh, um, service method. So you go to court and you say, listen, court, this is the only domicile address I have. However, we know the owner is not going to know about this. So allow me to serve via Facebook, via Instagram, via WhatsApp, via, via whatever. But you can get a court order for that. Also not the most expensive thing. And while you're anyway in front of court to do the utility desk connection, where you're going to serve on the occupant, the occupant's going to be aware of this. Um, you just already kind of rattle the cage. So there's a lot of things that can be done. Yes, the body corporate does not have the right to do an eviction on behalf of an owner, but very much so if the, if the owner is not paying his levies and we get to a point where we obtain a judgment against um, the owner for his real levies, we've done the utility disconnection application, we've done the application to declare the property executable because we cannot... Um, execute on that judgment in any other way than that, then you can approach the court, do an alternative service application, make sure that it comes to the owner's attention um, and sell the property. And once the property is then sold in execution, luckily the purchaser of that property will then be responsible to do the eviction, but at the same time will then have the locus standby um, to attend to that eviction. So Annie, I hope um, I at least gave you that way you can clearly see um, there is a lot of options. So, so get into contact with, uh, with well, either, either Bruno or myself, and we would happily guide you through the process. Um, it is a lot of uh, self dismayed. What's, what's my English uh, word I'm looking for? But there's a lot we can do. Thank you, Salma. I uh, really appreciate that. And I think Annie does as well. And so would be neighbors of this particular unit.